Welcome to the Daily Business and Finance Show. Tech tensions and trade troubles. China blocks Intel, AMD chips. States sue over Biden's LNG project halt. Exploring investment horizons beyond the Magnificent Seven to granolas and Bill Gross Market Insights. Industry updates, alcohol trends, McDonald's Sri Lanka shutdown, and FAA's United Route restrictions. Financial news flashes, Anglo-Americans barren nod and credit card delinquency dip amid rising charge-offs. Stay tuned after this short ad break to delve deeper into these headlines. China is gradually eliminating the use of U.S. manufactured Intel and AMD microprocessors in government servers and personal computers. In addition, it is substituting Microsoft's Windows operating system with homegrown alternatives. This action corresponds with China's continuous endeavors to remove foreign technology from critical operations. This includes a mandate set for 2022 that requires state-supported organizations to transition to local PC brands within a two-year time frame. 16 states are currently in a legal battle with the Biden administration. Texas and Louisiana are among these states. The dispute is over the suspension of new licenses for exporting liquefied natural gas. These states contend that this action is not within federal jurisdiction and it will negatively impact the economy. This suspension is part of an investigation into the effects of climate change. However, detractors argue that it could lead to a loss of billions in investments and job opportunities. Goldman Sachs is advising investors to broaden their portfolios beyond U.S. large-cap stocks and consider top-performing European companies, specifically those in the Granolas Group. This group differs from the tech-dominated Magnificent Seven as it includes companies like GSK, Roche, ASML, Nestle among others that are not primarily tech-focused and have less correlation with the S&P 500 index. These firms present comparable valuations but may offer more consistent growth and reduced volatility compared to their U.S. counterparts. Esteemed bond investor, Bill Gross, advises wagering on a leveling yield curve. He points out that the 10-year Treasury yield mirrors its position from two decades ago, a result of oversupply and real rates standing at 2%. Despite their robust performance, Gross counsels caution when dealing with master limited partnerships. He perceives potential in regional banks should the Federal Reserve decide to reduce short rates. In the United States, the alcohol market is a booming industry worth $90 billion. Beer is steadily gaining popularity, closing in on spirits. Mexican beers, particularly Modelo, are reaping benefits from an expanding Hispanic population. Despite Bud Light experiencing a drop in sales due to boycotts, other beer brands like Modelo and Michelob Ultra have witnessed increased sales. The market for spirits remains consistent while premixed cocktails are becoming increasingly popular among younger consumers. A Gallup survey reveals that 62% of adults indulge in alcohol consumption with middle-aged individuals who have higher incomes and college education leading these statistics. McDonald's has ceased operations at all its 12 locations in Sri Lanka. This action is a result of the termination of its contract with the local operator, Abans, due to issues related to standards. The fast food behemoth might contemplate a comeback with a new franchisee. This development comes on the heels of reports about legal proceedings over allegations of substandard hygiene against Abans. The Federal Aviation Administration, also known as the FAA, is currently contemplating steps to restrict the growth of United Airlines due to emerging safety issues. The potential measures could involve barring the airline from introducing new routes and prohibiting the use of recently received aircraft for passenger journeys. This consideration comes in light of multiple incidents, one of which includes a plane veering off a taxiway and another involving an emergency landing triggered by an engine fire. Mining Colossus, Anglo-American, could potentially surmount operational challenges or alternatively be subject to acquisition due to stringent market conditions and an underwhelming production forecast. Nevertheless, a resurgence is anticipated owing to the escalation in metal prices, implementation of cost reduction strategies, and the prospective sale of the company valued at $30 billion. The corporation's most profitable venture is copper mining in Peru and Chile. 
This operation boasts minimal production expenses and a promising long-term projection driven by the demand for green energy. In the month of February, there was a slight decrease in credit card delinquencies, while net charge-offs experienced an increase. This information is based on data collected from eight major companies. Despite these changes, the delinquency rates at American Express, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, and Bank of America are still below the levels they were at before the pandemic hit. Analyst John Hecht has observed a weaker-than-usual seasonal drop in delinquencies and an increase in net charge-offs. Furthermore, he anticipates that loan growth will slow down in 2024 due to stricter credit conditions and higher prepayment rates. Thank you for tuning into the Daily Business and Finance Show. Stay informed, stay inspired, and remember every financial decision counts. Until next time, I'm Montgomery Jones. And I'm Amalia Dupre. It's been a pleasure until we meet again tomorrow. This content is sourced from the Seeking Alpha website, so support our podcast by becoming a Seeking Alpha Premium subscriber. See the show notes page for links to sign up. This episode is produced by Classic Studios. This podcast provides information only and should not be construed as financial or business advice. Check out our other podcasts in our network at ClassicStudios.com.